What's up Chiefs Kingdom, Noah Gray here, tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to Joss's channel and check out showmefootball.com for more. What is up Chiefs Kingdom, welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Josh Fan of showmefootball.com and arrowheadaddict.com covering your Kansas City Chiefs. And today I wanted to do my annual four prospects that the Kansas City Chiefs should not draft in the first round of the NFL draft. Every year, I do a video where I talk about a handful of prospects that I think the Chiefs should stay away from in this year's NFL draft. And today, I am continuing that series with another four players that I think the Chiefs should stay away from in this year's draft. And some of the names might surprise some people. As always, I'm going to have some people disagreeing with me in the comments. That's okay. I'm not telling you who you should like or not like. These are just guys that, in my opinion, the Kansas City Chiefs should stay away from. And if you guys have been following this series over the years, some of the guys that I have named are players that ended up on the Kansas City Chiefs, namely George Karloftis a couple of years ago. He was on my do not draft list in the first round because I didn't love his ceiling very much. And that's okay. The Chiefs may not agree with me either, but... This is just my opinion. Please remember that when watching the video, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you appreciate my insights and maybe some of you who don't know as much about this year's NFL draft prospects, maybe get something from this video and can start to understand what the Chiefs are looking for and why I say these players would not fit. So let, without further ado, let's get into the list. All right, so the first guy that I have on my list, and this is probably the one that's going to cause the most controversy that is Texas wide receiver Adonai Mitchell. Now, a lot of people see Xavier Worthy as the Texas wide receiver prospect that teams should stay away from in the first round. And I have my concerns about Xavier Worthy as well. Um, the playing weight is scary to me. A guy that small, I don't, I don't know how that's going to translate to the NFL. But I think some of the concerns about him are a little bit overblown. When you compare him to a prospect like Adonai Mitchell... Xavier Worthy was the better college wide receiver, and it quite frankly wasn't even close. I don't think Xavier Worthy is another John Ross. Xavier Worthy can get open at all three levels of the defense, which makes him a far better prospect than John Ross ever was, in my opinion. I think when he broke that 40-yard dash record, it was almost the worst thing for him because now people are looking for reasons to be scared of him you know for lack of a better term and it's like I still think he's going to be a good player yes the weight scares me I don't know how he's going to hold up there are some concerns there but um I don't know why people are all of a sudden pretending like he's not a good player now on to Adonai Mitchell the guy that I have on the list the reason that I put him as do not draft in the first round is because after digging into some of his advanced metrics and watching some of his games I have some red flags that have me a little bit hesitant to spend a first round pick on them. First of all, uh, I talked about this in the last episode of the Kingdom Crew podcast, if you guys didn't catch it with Michael Darcy. This tweet's from Scott Barnett, DFB. He says, all round one wide receivers to average less than 85 yards per game in their best college season in the last 10 years. That list, John Ross, Brashad Perryman, Jalen Rager, Quentin Johnston, Kelvin Benjamin, Calvin Ridley, Philip Dorsett, Henry Ruggs, Adonai Mitchell. End of list. And Adonai Mitchell actually had the lowest yards per game out of all of those guys. And that is a long list of busts. The only guy on there that wasn't a bust was Calvin Ridley. And Calvin Benjamin had a good couple years in the league, but for the most part, those are all busts on that list, guys. And I get it. Adonai Mitchell has the prototypical X receiver traits. A lot of people consider him the ideal X wide receiver prospect in this year's draft, worthy of a first round pick. I'm just not sure I'm there with the whole first round pick thing. This isn't to say he's a bad player. I'm not even saying he's going to be a bust. Some people may mistake what I'm saying for that. I still think he's going to be good. I'm just a little bit hesitant to spend a first round pick on him if he's there at 32 for the Kansas City Chiefs. And another thing that I've noticed about him, and I've seen a lot of people echo the same thing, Adonai Mitchell likes to quit on his routes when he knows he's not getting the ball. And I don't know why that was. I don't know what the relationship was like with Quinn Ewers, his quarterback at Texas, but I don't really appreciate a guy that's going to be out there quitting on routes every time he doesn't get the ball. 
That's a red flag to me. We've had enough of that even with a guy like McCole Hardman who likes to quit on his routes when he doesn't think he's getting the ball. When you play with Patrick Mahomes, you have to be a guy that's constantly committed to playing through the whistle. And Adonai Mitchell, from what I've seen, isn't a guy that's all about that. And so for those reasons, I am hesitant about spending a first-round pick on Adonai Mitchell. If I was the Kansas City Chiefs, I would stay away from him. And I'm sure there's going to be some argument in the comments and pushback down below, and I get it, but these are just my thoughts. The next guy that I have on my list as a player that the Chiefs should stay away from in round one is Arizona offensive tackle Jordan Morgan. And I started off really liking Jordan Morgan as a prospect when I first got into draft season. I don't really dislike him as a player at all, but there's one reason why I feel like the Chiefs should stay away from him. And I know a lot of Chiefs fans like him too, so this might be a little bit of a heartbreaker for some of you. But he's not an offensive tackle at the next level. And if you're spending a first round pick on an offensive lineman this year, it has to be a guy that's an offensive tackle that has the potential to eventually start for you at either tackle spot. Jordan Morgan is not that. And that is because he has under 33 inch arms. And if you guys have paid attention to what the chiefs look for in their tackles over the years, arm length is a must. Now you don't have to have the longest arms in the world to play for the chiefs. Um, They've taken some chances on some guys with some shorter arms, but 33 and a half inches is kind of the cutoff and Jordan Morgan falls well below that. He just he's not an offensive tackle at the next level in my opinion. He the only way for him to thrive at the NFL level is if he kicks inside. Um, but as far as his outlook being an offensive tackle, I just don't see it. His arms are too short. He's not going to be able to have that reach and that length to be able to fend off defensive linemen. And so for that main reason, for that sole reason, he's not worth a first round pick, in my opinion. Really like the guy, really like the player. I love the way he plays. He's athletic. I think he'd be a really good guard, but you're not spending a first round pick on a guard. End of story. All right, so number three on the list is another wide receiver. And I'll tell you this right now, and I know it doesn't seem like it based on two out of the three players I'm about to mention in this video. There's not too many wide receivers in this draft that would make me lose sleep or that I would be upset over the Kansas City Chiefs draft them in the first round. It's just that I don't necessarily think these guys are worth a first round pick, but when you're picking 32, sometimes you have to make exceptions because that's just what the board looks like. The Chiefs only have so many guys with a first round grade, um, but they still have a first round pick to make. But the next guy that I would kind of stay away from in the first round is Oregon wide receiver Troy Franklin. Coming into the pre-draft process, Troy Franklin seemed like a consensus first-round receiver. Now his stock has kind of fallen to late first, early second, and that's firmly in the range of where the Chiefs would look to get him if they do take him. But I would stay away from him in the first round because he is kind of a Marquez Valdez-Scantling clone to me, and I feel like it's really hard to project him at the pro level. He's fast. Yes, he can take the top off of the defense, but... There are some inconsistencies in his route running. There's a lot of concern about his ability to beat press man coverage. And I know that's the case for a lot of rookie receivers, but it was especially the case for him, even at Oregon. And um, he also struggles with drops, which is the other big thing for me. Now, I am a pretty firm believer that drops are overstated a lot of the time. If you're a high volume wide receiver, you're just bound to have more drops. But there are a lot of concentration drops with Troy Franklin in his film. He just reminds me so much of MVS, and a lot of us have MVS PTSD right now. He's a guy that doesn't like to play through contact. He's not great in contested catch scenarios, which screams MVS. He's 6'2", but he plays smaller than he is. And yeah, he's not the biggest guy in the world. I mean, he's only like 175, 180 pounds. But he's got pretty lengthy arms, and he's got good hand size. So to not even be really a threat in contested catch scenarios, that that's a knock on him. I like the speed, I like the vertical stretchability, and that is something that the Kansas City Chiefs should look to bring back to this offense. But I think they can find it in guys other than Troy Franklin, and I don't think he's worth a first-round pick. All right, then the fourth and final guy that I have on my list of players that the Kansas City Chiefs should stay away from in the first round is unfortunately my guy, Missouri cornerback Ennis Rakestraw. And you guys know I'm a Mizzou fan. Love the Tigers. Love Ennis Rakestraw. Ennis Rakestraw entered the pre-draft process being a consensus first-round cornerback. 
Not so much anymore because of the pre-draft testing. Although, he was injured. He pulled his groin at the combine. I think that's why he didn't run as fast as he wanted to. That's why his RAS score isn't very good. I believe he is a first-round talent. But, here's the thing. I've seen him mock to the Chiefs a couple times at the end of the first round. I'd be pretty disappointed if the Chiefs took a cornerback. And this isn't just about Ennis Rakestraw. Um, it's more so of me using Ennis Rakestraw as the poster boy for the position that the Chiefs should stay away from the first round. Any cornerback in the first round would be a major disappointment to me. I just don't think it's that big of a need. Even if it's a guy you have a first round grade on, I think most people would be pretty furious if the Chiefs took a cornerback with their first round pick. There's no need to do that, especially with Feature's history of being able to effectively draft defensive backs in the later rounds of the draft. Um Again, I like Rake Straw. I do. I think he's a very good cover corner. He tackles very well. But I do also have some injury concerns about him. And and the main reason I'm even talking about him and using him as the example is because I've seen him mock to the Chiefs quite a few times now at the end of the first round by some draft experts. But it just would not be a very good pick in my opinion. I have concerns about his injury history. The fact that he's gotten injured already so many times throughout his college career. And then injuries are the reason why he couldn't even finish the combine. So, yeah, that's pretty much the consensus from me on cornerback in the first round. No need for it. No need to spend your first round pick on a defensive back in my opinion. I think most people can agree with me on that one. And you guys know that this is all bias aside. I love Mizzou. I love my Missouri Tigers, but I'm realistic enough to say, hey, this would be a bad pick. So yeah, I'm a no-go on Ennis Rickstraw in the first round. So there you guys have it. Those are four players that I think the Kansas City Chiefs should stay away from in the first round of this year's NFL draft. I want to hear from you guys, though, down below. Do you agree with me? Disagree with me on any of these picks? Um, are there any guys you have in mind that you would have put on this list instead? Let me know down below. would love to hear from you guys. Let's get some debate going. But with all that being said, make sure you like, share, and subscribe so more Chiefs fans can find this. And make sure you check out my work on showmefootball.com and arrowheadaddict.com for more. I'll see you all in the next one. Go Chiefs!